Hi everyone. So today we will be seeing how we can automate our login process by using Zerodha Kite API. So before moving to the project, uh, there are a few things you will be needing. First is you will be needing the uh, Zerodha account. Once you make an account, you have to visit their API website. Just get the secret and the API key. Uh, once you get these two uh, things, you are good to go. Now let me show you what I have done here. So there are a few libraries that I have installed. Uh, that is Kite Connect. So this is the official library that is provided by Zerodha to do any type of buy and sell the stock. Then I'm using the Selenium library to automate the process of login. Then I'm using something called as Pi OTP. So this Pi OTP is uh, something new that is introduced a few months back. So the reason for this is to increase one more layer of security. So what TOTP does is uh, you have to install a authenticator app in your mobile phone. And this authenticator app will continuously generate new OTP after every few seconds, like five to 10 seconds. And whenever you try to log in, you have to give that OTP. Uh, to verify yourself. So this is what the concept of TOTP is. So how do you activate it? So for that you can uh, visit this blog that is given by Zerodha. So in which they have explained in much more detail about how you can activate it and how you can install an app and how you can uh, verify yourself. Okay, so I will uh, request you to go through this blog and you need to get uh, this ID uh, while activating the two-factor authentication. So these three things you will be needing. One is API key, secret and this uh, uh, this code for TOTP. Okay. Now, once you have all these three things, uh, after that, now you just store all the things in a file. So I have stored it in a file called as Kite Credit. So I have stored my uh, Zerodha ID, then the password, the pin, the key, the secret, and the Pi OTP, uh, the code that I have got. Okay. These are all the things that I have saved in a Kite Credit, uh, uh, Kite Credit file. Now, after that, I am just calling this Kite Connect. Uh, okay, so this is going to make a kite object. So this is the main object that we will be using. So within that object, we have a function called as login URL. So this login URL uh, is going to generate a link. Okay, so you have to click on that link. You have to visit their site and you have to authenticate yourself. Now, once you authenticate yourself, uh, it is going to give you something called as access token. Okay, so let me show you how it is done. Uh, so the login URL function is going to give you a link. So once you click on that link, you will be redirected to this website. So this is where you have to verify yourself. First, you need to add your ID, then password. Okay. So for that reason, I've stored the ID and password in my uh, Kite Credit file. So let me just uh, write my ID and password. Now, once I click on login, it is going to ask me for a TOTP. Now I have to add my TOTP also. After that, it is going to uh, give me the authentication code. Okay, so this is what is going to happen. Now, let me show you how I can do this entire thing by using uh, Selenium library. Okay, so first of all, what I've done, first I have uh, run the Chrome uh, function of the web driver. Okay, so what this will do, it is going to pop up the window and it is going to start the driver. After that, I have the link. So this link that I just opened, I'm passing it in this uh, particular function. And after that, finally, this is like the main um, thing that I'm doing here that is I'm using a function called as find element by X path. So if you don't know about Selenium library, how it is used and all, you can watch my previous video to understand. Now, let me just show you how I can get the X path. So I'll just go to the website. I'll just do a right click and I'll click on inspect. Now the HTML code will appear on the right side. I just do a right click, click on copy and copy the X path. Okay. Now these, this X path I'm going to copy and I'm going to just paste it in the, uh, in this function. Okay, now this entire process I have to do for like four to five times. Why first for user ID, then for password, then for the click button, finally for the TOTP. So this is what I have done. You know, first I have uh, passed the X path for the uh, ID. Okay, then I am uh, sending the ID, whatever ID I have stored, I'm sending those ID into that, uh, you know, input uh, section. And then I'm uh, finding the password and then I'm uh, sending the password uh, keys into that input and then I'm clicking uh, on the container that is you know button I have to click on that button and finally I'm adding the TOTP okay so this is what I'm doing here so if you don't understand you can just uh, watch my previous video then finally you know now in order to get the TOTP so for that reason I've installed the pi OTP library in this library we have a function uh, which is now function this now function is going to give you the current OTP so that OTP I'm taking and I'm just sending it into that uh, input section okay uh, then finally uh, once I do all these things so I'm going to get one URL okay now in this URL there are lots of things we need the last 32 characters of that link so this last 32 character is nothing but uh, is a token okay 
So what I've done, I've taken the current URL and I'm splitting it into two parts, uh, the last 32 bit and the rest of the remaining thing. So this last 32 thing, I'm uh, storing it into a token file or token uh, variable. And then finally, I'm writing this token into a file. Okay, just to store it and to use it in for my future purpose. Okay, so after getting the request token, uh, let me show you how this entire code is going to look like if I run. So I'll just run the code. Let me just run the code. So first it is going to open the web driver. Okay, so the Chrome browser will open now and it is going to go to that link. It is going to add my ID, the password. It is going to click on login. Then it is going to add the TOTP and then again it is going to click on continue. Then we will get one link. Now just click, look at this link. Okay, now this link, I just, I'm just going to copy it. I'm going to cut it in two part and I'm going to store it in a file called as request token. Let me show you by opening the file. So this is the token uh, that we needed for our uh, future processing. So after getting this token, uh, finally there is one last thing we need to do that is we need to get the access token. So for that, there is a function that is uh, provided by Zeroda, which is generate session. This generate session takes two things. One is the token that we got and one is the API secret. After passing these two uh, things, it is going to generate us the access token. Again, what I'm doing, I'm storing this access token in one file so that I can use this access token for my future operation. So I'll just show you uh, how this looks like. So I'll go to my access token. So this is my access token file and this is the uh, thing that we needed. Okay, thank you.